Today is September 19th, 2013. We're at the Atlanta History Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my name is Joe Bruckner. I'm a volunteer with the uh, Veterans History Project, and Tony Hilliard is also a volunteer with the, Atlanta, with the uh, Veterans History Project. Uh, we're honored to have with us today Mr. Doyle Myers. Mr. Myers is a veteran of World War II and has agreed to share his story with us about his experiences during World War II. And we're also honored to have his daughter and son-in-law today with us, uh, Ms. Becky Clements and Charles Clements. And thank you all for coming. Mr. Myers, we really appreciate you coming in here to tell us your story, and we're looking forward to, to hearing it. Um, would you give us your full name and your date of birth? My full name is Doyle Adkin Myers, M-Y-E-R-S. And uh, my date of birth is December 17th, 1921. And where were you born? I was born in Franklin, North Carolina. Okay. And what is your current address? I live at 1495 Knollwood Terrace in Decatur. Okay. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your upbringing. You know, what you did as a youth before you went into the, into the military. Well, in my youth, I guess, our family moved to Atlanta when I was five years old. And uh, my dad, of course, that's during the Depression era. And my dad uh, wanted to come to Atlanta because Ford Motor Company had advertised uh, that they were going to hire some people to build automobiles. And uh, so we moved to Glen Irish Drive at Morgan Street and rented a house. And uh, I went to grammar school there. And uh, later we moved on to a, a better address to get to the schools that we needed to go to. Where did you go to, uh, grammar school? Grammar school, Forest Avenue Grammar okay. School. Yeah, that's right off of Glen Iris. Uh -huh. And uh, later, to get to high schools and so forth, uh, we moved to Rankin Street. Uh -huh. It was just got a little closer to Get, getting to where we're going. And where did you go to high school? Tech High School in Atlanta. Okay. Tell us what you did as a youth. I, I, you've got some interesting stories about <laughs> how you worked. <laughs> well, that was the, the Depression era back then. And uh, mother had, and dad had, eight kids, and I was the fourth one. And I knew that I had to do something to, if I wanted any expense, you know, to go to the show or whatever. It was up to me to get it. So I, uh, early on, uh, I was selling magazines, Saturday Evening Post to get new subscriptions. And uh, I won a trip by doing that, getting new subscriptions to the paper, or to the, to the magazines and so on. And I did the same thing later for, uh, I got a job with a, a local uh, man at that time. He carried the paper route for the Atlanta Journal to the whole area, and uh, I met him, and he wanted to hire me to, to help him carry the papers. And uh, I did that, and then the, later on, the, they had a, a contest uh, with the journal uh, that, to write new subscriptions to the paper. And uh, I won that trip by writing, going around and knocking on doors and talking to people 
to, 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 to subscribe to the paper. And uh, I won that trip uh, to go to Cuba. Wow. And uh, I was really impressed uh, being in the bad area, I mean, at times, yeah. that uh, I would never have won a trip like that, yeah. you know. Uh, it, but I wrote the most subscriptions and got that trip, and I was amazed that uh, uh, we didn't have, uh, well, it was a trip by riding with a, 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 a boat, a, a fisherman, you know, boat. And uh, I was impressed with the fact that uh, they had tablecloths on the table, and, <laughs> and uh, that when we got through e uh, eating, I was impressed during the Depression area that this guy put a whole quarter down for the <laughs> tip, you know. <laughs> but I, I was, I found out that uh, in Cuba we were friendly with them at that time. Yeah. In fact, uh, in my bombardier training and navigation training, uh, we made uh, uh, progress to have targets set up in, the, in an area for bombing. And, uh, well, I, I enjoyed the trip. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit about what you saw or what your feeling was when you saw Cuba back then as a young man. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I was impressed with the fact that uh, they were friendly and uh, they, uh, at that time, I was uh, just starting my training and, uh, and, and going to Cuba. Somebody told me I was. I just started picking up the, the language of, of, of Cuba at, in school, and uh, somebody told me the best word to use uh, in in greeting people and talking <laughs> the, the Spanish language yeah. is besame. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, tell us what I that, didn't know what that was. Yeah, tell us what that means. <laughs> I don't know either. Okay, well, maybe I shouldn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, now, it's, we, it's kiss my ass. <laughs> oh, okay, I figured, I figured it was something like that. <laughs> I'm glad we got that on the record. <laughs> you probably had to use that one a lot. <laughs> That's that's about the benefit yeah. of my my Spanish language. <laughs> Talk a little bit about how you ended up going into the military. Well, I just finished uh, high school, and uh, I had pretty good grades, and I had to make arrangements if I were going to go to college. I'd have to make arrangements on my own, because. <laughs> In the Depression, my father was working at Ford Motor and working on an hourly wage, and he couldn't afford that. Yeah. And uh, so, I, I don't know what I was leading up to. I guess you had to make a decision whether to go into the military or just you know what what. Well, I had to I had to make a decision. Of, I didn't want to be drafted. Right. I wanted to go into the Air Force. Right. My brother was two years older than I. He uh, uh, got to go to, well, he didn't have any college education either. But at that time, the, you know, America was uh, needing pilots, you know. 
and uh, he qualified and went in, but he later washed out because he had vertigo and was bouncing and they washed him out. Okay. He became a weatherman, <laughs> but I wanted to be a fighter pilot too yeah. uh, at the beginning. and. Uh, I uh, tried that, and uh, I didn't weigh enough. Huh. They, they didn't accept me as a pilot. Really? I was two pounds short <laughs> of weighing enough huh. to become a pilot. Uh, but they, they, I qualified to become a bombardier navigator. Now, is this around 1944? Right. Okay. Right. Right, right. right at the beginning. Okay. Uh, so I went through that training. Uh, I don't know what else. Did they assign you to a particular type of airplane? Yes. <laughs> I qualified to uh, and then that's when we consolidated after I finished that training. Uh, uh, I uh, qualified to be a the bomber uh, navigator and I was put on a crew of B-24s. Okay. And uh, we had a pilot and a navigator uh, uh, to uh, shoot on a, you know, a heading on stars. Okay. He was the that type of a navigator. But um, I uh, needed the, the bombardier uh, area in locating the targets okay. uh, that we were assigned to. When the intelligence would uh, assign us a, a target, it was my duty to be sure that uh, we located the proper target, and that was my responsibility. Where did you get training for all this? Where, what part of the country? Before? Well, I got a lot of training going to Cuba and bombing the targets that were outlined down there. On okay. The, on the, and my grades was uh, were, were well, and uh, they assigned okay. me to the, this B-24 okay. training. Okay. And uh, was that the Liberator? The B-24 Liberator. Okay. Uh, it was sort of competitive with the B-17 because the B-17 was used in England, and uh, but with the B-24, it, it carried a heavier bomb load, and it could get fly another thousand foot feet higher, okay. and it was a, a good plane to oh, okay. uh, have. Uh, Where was your first combat mission, or your combat missions? What part of the world, and what part of? Well, it was on June the sixth, and I was so happy that we were going. Well, we flew to Ploesti or refineries. And this is June sixth, nineteen forty-four. Right, and. I looked out the plane and to locate the targets, and all I saw was a, a big black cloud. And uh, I said, well, that's peculiar. <laughs> Sun shining and it's June the 6th, and we've got a big cumulative numbers out there. <laughs> and, uh, it dawned on me then that what it was. So you didn't know what it was before you took off, is that right? I mean, did they tell you what type of targets you were bombing? Oh, yes. Oh, they did, okay. We were assigned to bomb OSDR okay. refiners. Hitler had announced that he got 50% of his uh, bombing of this operation from that refinery. 50% of his oil from that refinery? Yeah. Wow. Uh, so I went and uh, knowing that 
the tail to, that if you ever went over that target one time, you God was with you. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh, June the sixth, I went on over the target and uh, bombed it successfully, and uh, was happy yeah. about that. Uh, well, I don't, what else do I need to tell you? Did you lose many members of your well, unit? On that, on that ship, uh, we, got, we came through successfully. I mean, other planes. Right. Did, quite a, did quite a few other planes go down? Uh, well, yes. They always, generally, would go over, to, according to what the target is, okay. We flew for different with different bombs. We had we were loaded sometimes, depending on the target, okay. uh, with 100 pound bombs and uh, 500 pound bombs, 1,000 pound bombs, or 2,000 pound bombs, okay. depending on the, the target that we were after. Okay. And uh, but my. Uh, Bombing record was rather efficient, and uh, and it seemed like that any time there was a real tough target, <laughs> it's put put me as the bombardier to be flown in the in the lead ship. And generally, a squadron commander or a group commander would be the pilot uh, to fly the mission, and they took me off of the the uh, crews that I was on, and uh, just used me for special assignments. You must have been one of the best then. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it. Uh, talk, uh, talk about what, you, how did you do what you did? I mean, when you got in the plane, what information did you have when you went up? Oh, I had a, a sheet that, that had a, location of the target and uh, uh, what was around the target uh, to identify it, to be sure that we were on the right target. Well, the, the, uh, we flew to the right area and it was my responsibility to locate it. And then uh, I would call the uh, pilot and say bombardier to the pilot, to, uh, I said, let's, let's hook up the, uh, the pilot, automatic pilot. Okay. And we would hook that up with the, and then we would go in. And my manipulation of the, of the bomb site flew the plane, actually, uh, over the target properly to, to, uh, with the bombs where they should go. So you could override the pilot? Or, right. And did that happen quite often? Well, no, I didn't. I needed him to set that pilot. <laughs> but uh, after that, he would shut it off and get the hell out of there, you know. Because <laughs> we were into quite a bit of flack. Yeah. Uh, we knew that was going on. And that's when if you got uh, our uh, protection from after we went over the target, we generally it was uh, we had uh, side uh, plane in the uh, gunners. Yeah. We had a gunner in the tail end, okay. had a gunner in the radio over the radio, right behind the pilot. And we had uh, a ball turret underneath with uh, one the gunner in that. Yeah. And uh, that was our protection. Okay. If, if, if we got hit, flat hit, and we couldn't stay in formation, uh, generally you were a dead the Indian. Okay. Because the Germans would shoot you down. And uh, uh, I did all right on 
on, on most of my targets. Yeah. Luckily, I never, well, it was up to me as the bombardier in, in, in pilot and in the nose, it was up to me. I'd gone through gunner school too. I would operate, uh, first of all, we had just one machine gun in the nose. But then later they put uh, a turret in there. And I wasn't about to climb in, the, <laughs> in that turret, going away from the target. But uh, luckily, I never got shot down. <laughs> uh, Talk about your other missions that you, I know you were involved in Sicily and you know, around Italy, and t talk about some of the other missions that you, because you flew a lot of missions. You, how many missions did you fly overall? Well, I got credit for 50 missions, uh -huh. but actually only 12 of those were double credit. I got double credit for going over Ploesti, okay. and I went over Ploesti four times. Uh -huh. And, uh, let's see, you those other targets, uh, well, M Munich itself, the headquarters for the, oh, really? for the, uh, was on there. I went up there once and got double credit for that, and it was, it was, uh, I think, eight targets that I got double credit for wow. because they were well protected. And, and uh, had stuff to make it rough for you. Yeah. <laughs> Heavy anti-aircraft yes, caught up. That and the gunners would come in. If you were wounded in that formation, you'd have to drop out of formation. And that was our protection. Our own gunners yeah. was our protection. And if you dropped out, they'd come in and Get you. knock you down. Yeah. Uh, but I had eight of those. Double credit. I ended up actually flying 35 missions, I guess. Yeah. Trips. Were you involved in Sicily also? Yes. Flying over there? And the invasion of southern. Excuse <coughs> me. <coughs> invasion of southern France and, and uh, the other invasion of Europe. Wow. Hitler was well set up in the midsection of, of Europe. Um, so the when you you mentioned June six, which of course is D Day, when you were flying over, were you able to look down and see what was going on? Sure. As far as the invasion force. Sure. <laughs> Talk about that. I mean, that must have been an awesome sight to see well, all those ships. And, I was just busy protecting what I could protect us. Doing your job. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting. Well, I got uh, two distinguished flying crosses and wow. three air medals because of the... Is that what that is? Oh, is that what's in there? Yeah, it, you brought those with you, did, I, did you? Yes. Would you show those so we can get those on the camera? Yeah. If you just hold that, like right here. Hold it in front of you, Dan. Okay. Yeah. I have two, uh, two distinguished flying crosses. Okay. And uh, that's signified by uh, this that you would wear in your uniform. Okay. And it, any additional lesson. Uh, I had one cluster with that indicating that I had two flying crosses. Okay. And then I had. Uh, I didn't have enough things here. I had uh, uh, three or four air medals that I was, got medals for. And uh, that's about it, I guess. This is the air medals, and this is the Stingers Flying Cross. Wow. Okay. And uh, that's it. <laughs> well, okay. Hey, that's. I, I know you're proud of it, but your whole family has to be proud of you for doing that. I mean, that's... 
I mean, that, you, you were obviously very good and put your life on the line a lot <laughs> to get all those. Well, I just, I did what I was had to do. Yeah. I was protecting everybody else yeah. from the... Talk a little bit. Oh, excuse me. Where were you based? Where was your squadron based? Manduria, Italy. It was right in the footstep on okay. the heel of, the, of Italy. Uh, that's where we were based. And what was the designation of your group? What was the unit? Oh, the 450th Bomb Group. Okay. I was in the 720th Squadron. Okay. But. Uh, my pilot, on our, when we first was assigned to that area, my pilot got shot down. So that busted the crew up. Oh, okay. And uh, then my navigator on the next mission, he got hit with a piece of flak above the knee that was a deep gash. Huh. He had to go into the hospital for a while. We lost him. Yeah. Huh. So. I was without a crew, <laughs> and they just used me then for yeah, uh, for flying the lead missions. And it seemed like that all of the rough missions <laughs> you got. I got the, <laughs> the assignment. Did you get hit very often? Your, your your aircraft that you were in. Oh yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Just what the feeling was when you knew you'd been hit. <laughs> well, you can hear the flak. Just ripped through the, through the beef. They were real accurate with that anti aircraft. And they'd shoot up these uh, large millimeter shells, and they, they were loaded with scrap metal. You know, and when the thing went off, it just threw scrap metal. Huh. Just all over the plane, you know, and knock holes in it. And that first B DFC. It was a big gash right below my head on this bomb site right. in the pedestal for the bomb site. Good gosh. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know, but uh, later in the trip, I think my prayers were ask God for protection, yeah. but also. Ask him to protect the enemy as well. Yeah. well. And, um, and whatever is his will, let it be done. Well. And I just lived with that, and luckily I came out well. to the good, I guess. I just, I just don't want people to think that I'm a, a hero. They did what I had to do. You too modest. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a hero to us, whether you want to be or not. <laughs> I want to, you've got some more pictures there. Uh, oh, well. Let's look at the one under your cap first. This one? Yeah. yeah. I thought that was a movie star when I first saw it. But, uh, <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Well, this was later after I became a captain. Uh, but this this picture here is uh, okay. Well, I don't know. Hold it up a little bit. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you've been promoted to captain at this point. Yeah. Just. Okay, just hold it like that because <laughs> we're getting the. Gl That's good. That's perfect. Uh, Does look like a movie star. I know. And then you've got another picture in your uniform on the other side of the table. Will you show us that one? Well, that's just be showing off again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, that's because I'm asking you to. I know you wouldn't do it otherwise. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Uh, uh, okay, just that's it. Okay, just hold it still. Just tilt it a little this way. 
a little bit more. That's perfect. That is perfect. Just a little bit more. There you go. It looks like another movie star. Now, I want to save the other, the best one for last, but I want to ask you a question about your, your, your bombing runs. When you would get back to base and you'd get with the crew at night, just around, talk about that a little bit. I mean, what you talked about, what your feelings were, that you had survived another day. And... Well, it was always a happy occasion, you know. Uh, to calm your nerves, the first thing they... When you got off the aircraft, and they gave you a, a shot of whiskey <laughs> to calm you down. Yeah. And we just uh, lived with it. That, uh, we joked about it a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether I should tell you this, you can cut it out. No, you, you, we want you to tell us. We want you to tell us everything that you can tell us. Well, one guy would, uh, it would cause you to have gas on your stomach, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and one fellow would jump up and said, Light a match, light a match. You know, and he, he would stand and stoop over the floor. <laughs> and it would be a stream <laughs> from the floor. That's a good story. I like that. <laughs> did, they, did they have a nickname for that guy? Pardon? Did they have a nickname for that guy? <laughs> Everybody does. Got a good laugh out of that. <laughs> when did you, did you fly until the war was over? Yes, okay. I uh, kept flying. Uh, you, know, the, the, you know, on the ending of, of the war, close to my end of my missions, the Russians, uh, I mean the Russians. <laughs> the Germans? The Germans, excuse me. Sure. Uh, there was a new plane, uh, a, a Falk Wolf, yeah. and it was had no markings on it. And uh, he came in from 11 o'clock low. And uh, came r right up, in, uh, and I, did, I wasn't in the, uh, the turret to, to, to shoot at him. But he had no markings on his plane. Huh. And so the, the ball turret gunner could shoot at him, but he didn't. Oh. And, uh, I guess because he didn't, he didn't identify. Yeah. But he came right up, right up to me, to my plane, and he veered off. Really. And went on, and did like this. Wow. As a friendship sign. Boy. He could have knocked us rock, but he didn't. That is really interesting. Uh, so there was a little bit of a bond even between enemies if you were flying. Right. Huh. That just shows you what war was about. Yep. You know, he had it in his head. Yeah. It, How about that? Huh. He shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Where were you when you heard the war in Europe was over? I was home. Oh, you were home by then. Uh, okay. Uh, so that so I were flew, you, excuse me. I flew the fifty missions. Okay. And uh, I married the, the, my wife, 
10 days before I went overseas. And uh, that's it. Well, this would be a good time to show the the best picture of all. <laughs> Let's see. Can you reach that here? Oh, uh. Can get it. Yeah. Well, well, it's all right. Don't, don't worry, worry about, about it. it. We'll get that happens, just, happens all, the, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> just water. Well, I asked her before I went overseas. I said, you want to get married now or later? <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, that's said, great. She wanted to go ahead and get married, and I <laughs> said, "No, I think it's best that okay. tilt it a little." Uh, this way. That's good. That's that's perfect. The way you have it and, right there. Uh, we'll get married after that. And, but you got married. Before. When she wanted to get married, didn't right. it? <laughs> Smart man. Yeah. We wouldn't have got, get, got married, but then uh, they wanted me to sign up for another, they said, you show leadership uh, ability. And we want you to sign up, and you wanted to be a pilot. Now's the time for you to be a pilot, you know? And I said, look, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Okay. You can, you can put it down. B before we get to what you did after the military, is there anything else you want to tell us about your experiences in the military, in the war? Any, anything at all before we move on? I don't know of anything in particular. Uh, did you keep up with any of your, your uh, fellow crew members or others that you served with after yeah. the war? It was short, but uh, yeah. uh, you know, in training, well, in, in, in flying, if you were with your crew, if we weren't going to be flying that, the mission that day, yeah. our uh, crew would come and meet with us with the officers. They would be the pilot and the north navigator and the co-pilot and, and the bottom there. <clears throat> what was I going to tell you? Uh, so if you weren't flying, you'd have a meeting we, with the crew? Yeah, we just get, get together. together and have some camaraderie. Maybe, maybe drink a beer or two? Or, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Relax. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I guess you really get close to to man in that situation. Would, but when we started out in training, my pilot, well, they, they put down a directive that no pilot, no new, no leakers would fly as a crew until they had three missions under their belt. Okay. Uh, We, uh, I forgot what I was going to tell you. Uh, but you, you wouldn't fly with the same people until yeah, right. you had well, enough. Well, I flew three missions bang, 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 and Did you? got it over with. Uh, huh. And uh, my pilot, for his first mission, he, had, he went to Munich. He didn't go back. He got shot out. Really? So that busted that crew up. Yeah. And uh, then there was a, my, uh, one of the unlisted, you know, uh, he was the, uh, what do you call it? We took care of the, the wheels and so forth to help the pilot. Engineer. Uh, Crew chief. Crew chief. Oh, crew chief. You. Okay. <laughs> I watched. He was all elated that since he was shot down the first thing over Yugoslavia, and uh, the Vietnamese and the Czechniks. The Czechniks were for 
Germany yeah. and the meetings with for a lot. Yeah. Um, they 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 picked him up. The which ones picked him up? The, the meetings. Okay. Caught him and uh, put him in the attic of a, an old church. Huh. And uh, he stayed up there for a while. And they went after him, and since he didn't get the caption, and uh, he had bug bites all over him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but he was real happy that he thought he wasn't going to have to fly anymore. Okay. And uh, but he did when he found out he wasn't captured, so they put him back to flying. Huh. And uh, he was in the number two ship on a mission that when they put him back really? to fly. And I watched his plane. Oh, God. he got a direct hit. Uh, it's, if you hit those B-24s, their, their gasoline supplies was in the wings. Oh, okay. And uh, if you got a hit in the wing, It'll blow up, right. and it's, you'll go right down. Jeez. But that one guy was, was a it, it was surprising to me that the fella came up ideally to knock me right out of the air. Yeah. And uh, went away with the friendship. I guess he. That, that's a really interesting story. Right. Talk a little bit about what you did after you got out of the military. Uh, well, what, what did I do? Uh, what did I do? <laughs> American Oil was one. Worked for American Oil for many years. Amica. You lived in Atlanta. I lived the rest in Atlanta, and uh, I got. Uh, I went back to college at night, okay. and uh, got two years credits. Uh, Talk about your family, children, grandchildren. You want to <laughs> identify them? <laughs> yeah, well, you don't have to talk about them too much, but just <laughs> who they are. <laughs> you have you have children. We know you have children. Oh, yeah. Grandchildren. I had children and grandchildren. Good. Yeah. Good. Becky was my oldest. Okay. And Molly was the second one, and uh, Kathy was the third one. Good. And uh, I tried to. Got eight grandchildren. Eight grandchildren. Wow. Nine, nine great grandchildren. Oh, congratulations. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> I want to be sure that everybody here has a chance to ask you know, or clarify anything or say anything or ask a question before we stop. And I'm going to give you some more time to talk too. But. Do y'all have any questions or anything or a Tony? Well, I want to give you a chance just to say anything you want to say about anything, <laughs> if there is. I mean, it's it. Your story is amazing. I mean, it really is. I know you don't think it is, but uh, to us, it is. The, the the danger you put yourself in every day and well, what you did every day for the country. But, when I was asked to come in. I don't want people to think that I was a, a hero. Uh, that wasn't it. Well, you got two well, distinguished I flying crosses. <laughs> well, you just told your story. Everybody can make their own decisions. <laughs> yeah, just, not everybody gets a distinguished flying cross, particularly two of them, as Tony said. But, right. but is there anything else you'd like to say? To, well, I just like to say that Jesus will take care of your needs well, and uh, 
you believe in Christ and follow his direction uh, to make him happy, whatever his wishes are. I agree with you 100%. I can't think of a better way to, to finish this. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in here and telling your story. And uh, I know it's an honor for both Tony and me to meet you and to hear your story. And, and thank you for what you did for our country. Uh, I did what I had to do.